In this video, we'll be talking about the chi-squared distribution, which has a very close relationship to the normal distribution, which we'll talk about uh, after we discuss the properties of the chi-squared distribution. So we say that our random variable x is distributed as chi-squared with parameter k. So this is a little bit different notation than you've been using. Uh, usually when putting the uh, parameter, in this case, k in parentheses, and you can do that here too. So I could have just as easily written uh, x is distributed as chi squared and put parentheses k if that makes you feel better. But um, I've been I've been taught to write it like this. And I think it's more compact if you just write this as the subscript and the chi squared is the actual name of the distribution. So uh, for viewers who don't know, this x looking thing with the curvy uh, with the curvy line going through here, this is a chi. It's a Greek letter chi, and the squared is just part of the uh, random variable name. So k has to be a natural number, which means something like 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, all those kind of integers like that. Um, and this is our definition right here. Okay, so the p the PDF is given right here. Um, and it is uh, f big X of little x is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of k over 2. Uh, gamma function, so if you need to review the gamma function, we'll do that in just a second. Gamma function evaluated at k over 2, x to the k over 2 minus 1, times e to the negative x over 2, and this is for all x that are bigger than or equal to 0, okay? And it's 0 otherwise. So we have this PDF right here, and um, this might seem arbitrary, but let us let me tell you where it's from. So if we go back to the gamma distribution video, or if you review the gamma distribution video, let's do that right now. Uh, we have again f big x little x is equal to 1 over, and this weird symbol will be explained later in just a second, uh, it's called gamma, so uh, the gamma function. So 1 over the gamma function evaluated at k, theta to the power k, x to the power of k minus 1, e to the power of negative x over theta, as long as x is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, now the uh, elusive thing here, the thing you probably don't know is the gamma function. So the gamma function is defined as an integral. So it's simply defined as the... Uh, the gamma function evaluated at some real number t is the integral from 0 to infinity x to the t minus 1 e to the minus x dx. Um, okay, so now that we reviewed the gamma distribution video, take that gamma distribution PDF and everywhere you see a k, instead put k over 2. And everywhere you see a theta, instead put 2. And what you're going to see is that you're going to get exactly this PDF right here. That means that the chi-square distribution is actually just a special case of the gamma distribution, just like we saw that the exponential distribution was a special case of that gamma distribution. Okay, so um, again, just to recap, just to make this very clear, because this is that is the key insight we're going to use in finding the expected value variance and MGF in a very short amount of time. So all we did was we took the gamma distribution and um, instead of putting k, we let k over two be the be the stand-in for k, and instead of theta, we gave theta a concrete value. We said it's going to be two, and doing those substitutions, we get exactly the chi-square distribution. So now let's find the expected value variance and MGF, and you're going to see it's very very easy since we already know the expected value variance and MGF of the chi squared, uh, uh, sorry, the gamma distribution. And if you need to review how to find those, please go to the gamma distribution video and look at how I found the expected value variance and MGF of the gamma. So uh, if we have this new random variable y is distributed as gamma with parameters k and theta, then expected value of y we saw was k uh, theta. So here we have that uh, k is replaced by what? It's replaced by k over 2, and we have theta is replaced by 2. So expected value of x, and since x is just a uh, special type of gamma distribution, its expected value is the same. So we're going to take k theta, which in this case is k over 2 times 2, so it's simply just k. So the expected value of a chi-square distribution uh, with parameter k, and actually I should note this parameter k is often called uh, the number of degrees of freedom of this distribution. So it's often called a chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom. So the expected value of such a distribution is given by just the parameter k, or it's given by the number of degrees of freedom. Now again, we use the same trick. The variance of a gamma distribution, we said, was given by k theta squared. So here, we're going to say k is represented here by k over 2, and theta is uh, 2, so 2 squared is 4, so we get 2k. So the variance of a chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom is just 2 times the number of degrees of freedom. Okay? So let me box these results to make sure they're easily findable. And the last thing we need to do is the MGF. So the MGF of this uh, gamma distribution y is given by 1 minus theta s to the power of negative k, as long as s is less than 1 over theta. So again, all we have to do is just plug in uh, the things here that are standing for k or theta. So we have here, MGF of x is 1 minus 2 s, and here we have minus k over 2. That's it. That's the MGF. As long as s is less than 1 over theta, which is here 1 over 2. Okay, so this is our MGF right here.
So that was very, very simple. And the reason it was simple is because we already had all these results from the gamma distribution. So really, uh, all the key insights, all the key calculations are done in that video. So now, uh, the last thing we'll talk about here uh, is the relationship between normal distribution and the chi-square distribution. And really, this is how the chi-square distribution is defined. So we're going to see the definition uh, right now, how, how we take that definition. So we're going to say, we're going to let z, this random variable z, be distributed normal, that n stands for normal, uh, with mean 0 and standard deviation, uh, sorry, with variance 1, uh, also standard deviation 1. So we're going to let uh, new random variable x be equal to z squared. Okay, so all we did so far is define z as a normal 0, 1 random variable and take a new random variable x and let it be z squared. So now we're asking question, what is the distribution of x? So when I originally wrote this paper, I thought of doing it this way. We use the CDF, uh, and then we use uh, the kind of like a derived distribution method to try to find the distribution of z, uh, but uh, sorry, the distribution of x using the what we know about z. But I thought there might be an easier way. So this might be easier for some people if you're good with just rote calculations, just going through it, then that's perfect. But uh, maybe going through MGFs will be a little bit more elegant, a little bit more simple for us. So here's the easier way. We're going to go through MGFs, and we're going to use a key fact about MGFs, which I'll note as soon as we get to that point in the calculations. So we want to find the MGF of this new thing, x. So we say, what is the expected value of e to the s, x? Well, since x is just z squared, we just substitute in z squared right here. So what we want is the expected value of e to the power of s, z squared. Now, this is just some kind of question about a normal random variable, right? Because z is normal, and that's the only random variable that appears in this expression right here. So this is easily done just by using our expected value formula. So all we have to do is take the PDF of uh, big Z, which is a PDF of a normal 0, 1 random variable, and I've written it here. So the PDF is split as the outside constant 1 over radical 2 pi and the inside part, which is e to the negative z squared over 2. And you have to multiply that by this thing we're taking the expected value of. So e to the s uh, little z squared dz. And I'm taking it from minus infinity to infinity. So now uh, in this next step, I made some insights. So I said uh, this, this integrand right here, that we have is an even function, right? Because the only time z appears is in the form z squared. So that means the integral from 0 to infinity is the same as negative infinity to 0. So I've replaced this bound by 0 to infinity, and I'm just doubling the integral right here. So I pulled out this 2. So uh, And the reason is that it's an even function. And I've kind of reduced the inside. Since these are exponents, I can add them. And I've taken a common z squared out, so I have z squared s minus 1 half dz. Okay, so all that's left, we have to use that uh, cool trick we used before, where this integral, we need to evaluate it by evaluating its square. So we're going to evaluate the uh, square of this integral right here. So I've written uh, two copies of it, one with, uh, one with z and one with t, just so we don't have the same one and get confused. And I've put them together, since this, uh, this only is in terms of t, and this is only in terms of z, so I can just put them together. Um, and I have this double integral here. And what I want to do, as we did before, is convert it to polar form. So I want to convert it to something r theta. So uh, I just convert the dt dz to r dr d theta. And I convert this, r, this uh, t squared plus z squared into an r squared. And I have the r squared here. And the bounds, so let me draw a quick picture to help you uh, see how these are. So the bounds this time, we have from 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity. So we really only want this quadrant right here. We want this quadrant 1 right here. So what is that in terms of r theta? Well, the radius is still 0 to infinity, but the angle is now going from 0 to pi over 2. And I've reflected that here uh, by putting those bounds exactly, 0 to infinity for r and 0 to pi over 2 uh, in this integral here. Okay, so um, actually we have started that right here. Okay, so, uh, and now we need to use the u substitution. This is just normal stuff we did before. Uh, so we're trying to evaluate this inside integral right here, first off with the, the r integral. And so we need to let u equal r squared, go through the u substitution, and then we have down here this integral here. Uh, and then we just evaluate this with the u. This is now something we can evaluate, um, just using a simple e to the u uh, integral. And then we get this result coming out. The constant on the top is flipping, coming out. Uh, that comes out over here. Uh, this is just standard stuff. And then the e to the u uh, to the power of 2s minus 1 over 2, which, by the way, is just s minus 1 half written uh, with a common denominator, evaluated from 0 to infinity is just negative 1. So that negative 1 comes here. And simply, this integral is just negative pi over 2. So we have all that here. This is just a routine calculation. And I've taken this negative and used it to uh, flip the denominator here. And again, there's a, there's a 2 here to multiply by. So in all, the square of that integral that we were interested in is pi over 2 minus 4s. Okay, so if that's the square, then what we do 
is we take the square root of it, so we take radical pi over radical 2, radical 1 minus 2s, and that integral, if we look back uh, where what context it was in, uh, that integral is this integral right here, and we need to multiply it by 2 over radical 2 pi, which is what we're doing here. And I've done all this cancellation, all this cancellation comes out really nicely, and all we have in the end is 1 minus 2s to the power of negative 1 half. Now, what does that mean for us? Now, let's look back at when we calculated the MGF of a chi-squared random variable. The MGF is 1 minus 2s to the power of negative k over 2. Now, what if k is 1? So what if we have a chi-squared distribution with 1 degree of freedom? So k would be 1 here. So then the MGF would be 1 minus 2s to the minus 1 half. And see that, this would be, this is exactly what we just found right here. And the reason we're making such a big deal that this MGF is the same as the one we just derived by plugging 1 right into the chi-squared MGF is that uh, the, because of the uniqueness property of MGF. So there's a property about moment-generating functions that says that if we have uh, some one distribution and we derive the MGF, and then we take a different distribution and we derive that MGF, and if these two MGFs are actually the same, then that means the two distributions we originally derived them from are also the same. So because of that, um, because of that uh, property, that uniqueness, that inversion property of MGFs, uh, we have that since this MGF matches the same one as a chi-squared random variable with one degree of freedom, then that means that the distribution that we got this from, and to recap, that distribution was uh, that distribution was a normal random variable squared is exactly the distribution of a chi-squared random variable with one degree of freedom. So we find that uh, actually if we take a normal random variable uh, with mean zero standard deviation one, so standard uh, normal random variable, and we square it, we get a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. So now, that is important because of this extension. This extension will kind of finish off our uh, definition of the chi-squared random variable. So now, instead of just one uh, normal random variable, uh, one standard normal random variable, let's say we have k standard normal random variables. So we have z1, z2, z3, zk, all, the, all these k normal 0, 1 random variables. And furthermore, they're all independent. Now what we do, instead of letting x just be one of them squared, we let x be the sum of all these squares, okay? So alone, so alone what are these? So if we just have z1 squared alone, we just found that that was a chi-squared with one degree of freedom. Likewise, uh, we have z2 squared. Again, that's also chi-squared with one degree of freedom. And likewise, all of these are chi-squared with one degree of freedom alone. But together, what are they? So this, a little bit of thinking involved is the last thing we'll do. So if uh, we need to do a little bit of excursion. So we have a random variable A, which is distributed as chi-squared with k degrees of freedom, and we have a random variable B, which is chi-squared with l degrees of freedom, then A plus B is distributed like what? So uh, using the MGF property we just learned, um, it'll be very simple to figure out what's the distribution of this if we can figure out if the MGF of this matches anything familiar. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to find the expected value of e to the power of s a plus B. We're trying to find the MGF of this random variable right here. So we do exactly that. We get e to the s a plus B is the same as e to the s a uh, times e to the s B. So uh, just making concrete what I'm doing here. So we have this right here. So I'm breaking this up using rules of exponents e to the s a e to the s B. And since the expected value of a product of independent things, A and B are independent, uh, right here, so we have A, B are independent. Uh, if we have a product of independent things, we can just break it up as the expected value of the first thing, expected value of the second thing. So expected value of the first thing is just chi squared degrees of freedom k, so we just write down the exact formula. So the exact formula for that is given right here. And likewise, the exact formula for uh, B, which is L degrees of freedom, is written right here. So if we were to just take the product of these guys, then we get this 1 over 2s, this 1 minus 2s is common, so we just need to add the exponents together, so we get 1 minus 2s uh, to the power of negative k plus l over 2. And we see that that is exactly the MGF of a chi-squared with k plus l degrees of freedom. So because the MGF match, because the MGF of the sum here matches the MGF of this random variable, the sum is distributed exactly like this random variable here. So we replace this question mark by a chi squared k plus l degrees of freedom. And now this little excursion means what for this x right here? So x is the sum of all these chi squared guys. So this is chi squared with one degree of freedom, this is chi squared one degree of freedom, all these are chi squared with one degree of freedom. So if we add them together, as we just saw, what we get is a distribution which is chi squared with 1 plus 1 plus 1, how many are there? There's k. So k degrees of freedom. So we see that the definition of a chi-square random variable with k degrees of freedom 
is exactly taking k uh, standard normal random variables, meaning uh, mean zero, variance, and standard deviation one, squaring them all and adding them all up together. And that's exactly the definition of chi-squared random variable with k degrees of freedom. So that's how we get it. And the major properties of it, mean, expected, uh, expected value, variance, MGF, are listed right here. So it's very important to uh, use the gamma distribution as a foundation because it makes all these calculations so much easier.